Tubes. This tube, specifically. This is kind of an interesting tube that I got during, uh, included in that clean-out of my uh, friend's place. Uh, the same place that I did get that uh, General Radio Nixie tube counter. There were some tubes there, a lot of TV tubes that are not particularly useful to me. Um, but there were a couple of oddballs, and this is really one of them. And, uh... This this is this this is a weird one simply for the extreme tube geeks because it's a weird weirdly marked variant of a fairly standard tube. This is an 866. It's made by Hytron. And uh well, I can show you that it is or maybe the connoisseurs out there can already tell that it is a weird 866. Now, as you know, I collect tubes and I do have this weird interest in the 866 rectifiers in general. Um, that is simply because so many people made the 866, all the way from when RCA introduced the things back in the very late 20s, I believe, or somewhere around 1930 or so. Um, and they, they were still in, in frontline service way into the 60s. And just zillions of manufacturers made them. So there's a lot of variety of them. Now, the 866 is a mercury vapor rectifier. It is a uh, half-wave rectifier and mercury vapor because, yes, there is a tiny, tiny little blob of mercury in here. And you can kind of see it's probably amalgamated with a bunch of stuff. As others, you can see a little bit there. Um, this one's got some hours on it, clearly. Um... The idea being is you vaporize the mercury with the filament and uh, you can get an awful lot of current through the tube with a very low voltage drop, much, much lower than uh, a vacuum rectifier. And so mercury rectif uh, vapor rectifiers were popular in higher power tr uh, uh, applications like transmitter power supplies and such like that. Um, so, very popular tube, and like I said, everyone made them, including Hytron. A Hytron 866 is normally nothing terribly special, except for this weird one. Now, uh, we can show you here some 866s of the past. This is here, this is what a UX-866 would look like. This one's actually branded a Fisher. <laughs> I don't know who actually made it because I, I couldn't actually find one of my RCA UX 866 early early versions. Um, but they look just like this. But yes, it has the big uh, balloon style bulb here. And that lasted uh, until the late 30s where they uh, switched over to the more common, if you will, for most of us, the ST bulb here. And this is the one that they made a million of them during World War II into the 50s. They were still making them like this. Sometime, I think, in the mid-1950s, I'm not entirely certain, but some companies started to thin the bulb a little bit. You can see the bulb is just a little, little thinner. Uh, it's the same tube. It's the same ratings, basically. Just like so it's shave off a little bit in terms of costs with this slightly smaller bulb. Um, now, what's interesting is, oh, these are both GEs, and uh, yeah, oh, you can see this one, this one has got a 1975 date code. That's a very, very late for that. Uh, yeah, it says GE, but uh, whenever you see that 188, that means it's a GE tube. That's an RMA code, and uh, a lot of tubes of the 50s will have that, 50s and 60s. And if you see 274, that's RCA. 188 is uh, uh, GE. And all the makers have their, their three-digit code. Anyway, um, so these are kind of your standard 866s. These are actually A's since they have the shield around the filament. Um, so let's look at this Hytron again. Get you guys out of the picture. Well, first of all, it's that thin bulb. And which is really weird because these really didn't show up for the most part until the 50s. Except this one's clearly mid-30s. And I say that because it's got the branded base. And you can kind of barely see. I'm sorry, the, it's always hard to light up these branded bases. But it's got the big H-style Hytron logo, which is probably 
mid, maybe late 30s, maybe late 30s. Um, and uh, obviously this style didn't last long because when Hytron started making tubes, specifically 866s for the war effort, they were, they, well, well, they, they looked just like this one. They were standard 866s. So this has got that weird thing of, okay, it's a thin bulb. However, what is even weirder is, if we can get in there, on the bulb, on the glass, it is marked 66. Now, that's very interesting. That's because 66 is one of those magical unicorn numbers. Now, in the early uh, 30s, tubes were, were uh, basically given two-digit numbers. And a lot of those are extremely common. The 27 triode, the 59, the 80, the 80 rectifier. Um, yeah, the, from most of the numbers, most of the two-digit numbers were in fact used and are well known. However, there are a few of them, I don't know how many, maybe 15, that never really made them that. And 66 is one of those numbers. It just doesn't show up in any of the data books or the information is very sketchy. And, uh, yeah, there are some other numbers that are in the same boat, like 69 is another strange number. There actually was a 69, the uh, Sylvania made 69s, but they never really got registered and never really got adopted by the industry. 66 is one of those numbers. Now, I have to wonder if... Hytron here, in looking at RCA's very successful 866, decided, oh, we're going to make a mercury vapor rectifier, and we're going to be clever. We're going to call it the 66. And so they stamped the bulb there, and maybe confused an awful lot of people. <laughs> so, so they had to put an 866 sticker on the thing. <laughs> I don't know. This is all wild theory. Um... This is the only one of these I've ever seen, so clearly the, the, this style didn't stick around, nor the 66 number. But yeah, they put this sticker on here for uh, uh, the standard industry 866, and you can see they even put the data on it. And this one actually has a serial number. It looks, it's real hard to see. I don't know if I can focus there. Uh, 632, maybe? Date sold is not filled in. That would have been handy. And on the other side is a sticker that tells you about the dangers of flashover and make sure that uh, you uh, get that filament lit and stay stay have it stay lit for a while while the uh, mercury vaporizes. Once again, it's the serial number is even worse on this. It's hard to say. And they didn't fill in the date sold. Um, but, uh, yeah, very weird, especially that 66 there. Let's light this up, because this is a nice-looking tube. It's got that nice exposed filament that the early 866s have, and, of course, it has the holy blue glow. So, just so happens that another thing that I got in this clean-out was another tube tester. And, yeah, this is an ICO. And I'm not planning on keeping this. This is going to go to the Cutsdown Radio Show, which is coming up pretty soon, actually. And, um, what, two weeks, three weeks? I better get my act together on that, um, and I'll, I'll have this on my table to, to to get rid of and sell because I normally use a TV seven um, and a Hickok five thirty something. I forget which five thirty series uh, tester it is, but those are my go to testers. I also have uh, one of those big Westons, which I'll uh, one one of these days I have to dig out and and, and uh, um, fix that thing up because that thing's fantastic. Um, but yeah, let's light this guy up. I had to guess at some of the film, uh, the, uh, the settings here because, uh, these things, these things, um, these little icos are made for TV tubes, not big, big tubes like 866s. The 866 draws a pretty good amount of power on the, on the filament. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just run this thing through here. Having trouble before, and whoa, there we go. Look at that, the holy blue glow. Beautiful. So, yeah, I don't want to do this too much because we're probably really overloading the tube tester here, and uh, I don't want to bust out, bust the fill of the uh, plate, plate transformer inside of here. 
Um, uh, actually, this may not even have a plate transformer. It may take, take it right off the line. I don't know. But there we have it. We've got uh, a nice 866 here and an oddball 866. Hytron from the 30s in a weird style with a very weird number. Maybe one of those missing unicorn numbers. I don't know. So if any of you tube guys out there um, have anything to say about this, yes, please leave it in the comments. Um, gonna <laughs> save the film and transformer in this as well because uh, I think that draws a good, I don't know, at least five amps. And this, the, these, these are not made for that that type of use. If any of you tube guys know anything about these weird early Hytron 866s please let me know. Uh, fill it out in the comments. Um, yeah, this one's going to go into my collection of 866s. I like it. It's pretty cool. Um, so there. Okay, well, I hope you like this this kind of strange video of a, a weird tube. And, of course, as I find more weird tubes, I will indeed make videos on them. Uh, share this around if you want. Give it a like. Um... I do uh, have a Twitter account, Uniservo, so you can always follow there when I, uh, when I upload videos. And, uh, okay, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. I'm nearly at 500. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.